Hey everyone, I am doing this video tutorial on how to make satin and organza hair bows for my sister because we live in different states and doing this over my blog is too difficult. So I am going to do this video, so hopefully it's helpful. Um, what I do is I use satin or organza. I have tried tulle and several other fabrics that I think are really hard to work with, so if you want this to be easy, <laughs> stick with satin. Um, and organza. I just get satin from the store. Sometimes I buy remnants from Hobby Lobby. They're like a dollar or less. They're really inexpensive. The fabric's doubled over when you get it. I cut my fabric that way because I like to have enough to make two bows for pigtails for my daughters or send one off to a friend. So I do about a four by four inch square and then a slightly smaller square in a different color or the same color, whatever you want to do. Um, another smaller square and then another one. So I, these are two, I've got two colors here, blue and yellow. I've done three colors here, purple, green, and orange for Halloween. I've done seven layers here of the same color of green for a really big bow. Um, I have a combination of satin and organza right here on the yellow bow and then some plain organza small bows here. Um, this one has six layers of organza. So you can basically do whatever you want to. Um, you will need a tea light, a lighter, a needle and thread, scissors, hot glue gun, bead if you want to use a bead in the middle, um, and a clip or a snap clip and that's what you will need. So, um, oh, and some felt. You'll need some felt for the back. So let's get started. Go ahead and cut, have your fabric cut into the squares. Once you get your fabric cut into the squares, um, keep it together, doubled, and slit slits in each of the, the middle of the flat ends and make sure you leave a good amount of fabric that isn't snipped into right in the center, especially working with organza, because as you're burning into that, it melts quickly and you could melt a petal off if you aren't careful enough. So take your fabric, and I like to melt every edge as opposed to just the top edge of the petal, um, which I have seen videos on. I like to melt all the way down in just because I want my bows to stay put together. I don't want them fraying. My girls are running around in these. I don't want to have them falling apart. So I spread my fabric open and I start all the way in and I start melting outward. Now every fabric is different. Even though I've used diff several different colors of satin, they all burn a little bit differently. What my air conditioner came on. Um, they all burn a little bit differently. Some are faster, some are slower. I noticed that the brown was really slow and some of them catch fire more easily for whatever reason. It might be the dye lot. If you end up having a black edge like that, take your scissors, snip it off, and continue on your way. You won't even notice it. So continue around your flower like that. Sometimes I start at the corner and work my way in on the edge. Um, continue around until your flower looks like this. Once you get to this point, you can start layering your bow if you want to. I take mine a step further and I like to pucker my fabric. It helps the bow look really full and cute and messy and I like it that way. So I take and pucker my fabric. I do puckers through the center just be careful in the dead center not to do a really big pucker because your fabric becomes hard on the back and you're not going to be able to sew through a really hard pucker. So kind of do a few of those. I like to do a bunch of them on each petal. Do whatever you think works, whatever you think is cute. I've puckered the center there. I'm just going to blow on it a teeny bit so that I can hold it and it's not too hot. I'm going to pucker the petals and you just pull the fabric away as soon as it starts puckering. On the organza, you don't have to get it nearly as close to the flame as you do with the satin. I'm not actually putting this in the flame. I'm holding it above the flame and the heat melts the fabric. So with the organza, it puckers really quickly and it can easily leave a hole if you aren't careful, which 
most of the time the holes that I have made aren't noticeable in the bows but just be careful to hold your fabric um, away. Now this one got really thin in the middle. It actually won't matter when the bow's all put together, but just be careful. Once you're all done with that, your bow will look like this. I've got four pieces here and I'm going to put them together staggered because that's the way I like to do it. And I have this organza that has little sparkles, little jewels on it. My daughters love this, and I'm gonna make sure that those are facing upward and not downward. Grab my needle and thread and go straight through the middle and back down through the middle. On the very first one, I am going to loop through the end of my thread, if I can get it, because particularly on the organza, your knot will pull right through the fabric. So just to secure it and then go up and down a few times. I'm using light, light pink thread. I didn't have any salmon colored thread and I was not going to buy any. And you won't notice this once the bead is on or you glue something in its place. Now I'm going to just come up through slightly off center, add my bead, whoops. and go back through the back. Now I'm gonna pinch my fabric and just try and go back through that same hole if I can. I can find it. And loop through that bead, I don't know, two or three times, whatever you think is necessary. Um, the back doesn't need to look too pretty because it's gonna be hidden here in just a second. Then I'm going to loop through and knot this off. Oops, right there I hit a hard spot from my pucker and it was hard to get the needle through. So go ahead and tie that off if you end up with a little loopy. Sometimes that happens, especially with cheap thread. I've sewn a few of these with those cheap free sewing kit thread things and they are terrible at that. Um, but it's not going to matter here in just a sec. So go ahead and tie that off. Make sure your bead's on there well. That and you're all sewn together. You've got your bead in the center. You've got a cute little bow. Go ahead and flip that over and you're going to use a piece of felt. Now this piece is way too big for this bow. So I am going to cut it down. I was going to use this for a different bow, but it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to cut it down to size and then my little piece here I'm going to cut down to size too. I like to keep these kind of thick. You don't have to. You can make them thinner. I found when they are thinner and you've got a really heavy bow that they stretch out. Take your hot glue gun that's heated up. Mine is not heated up. Um, and glue the center of that felt piece Put it right down on the fabric, flip it over, press it on, and then flip it back over and it will start to dry. Then you will want to glue here and here. Don't drag your glue through the center because you need that to be free so you can put the clip in and just right on top there and let it dry. Once that's done, it will look like this and you will be able to hook in whatever kind of clip. Now, if you're doing really small bows, it's gonna be harder to get the snappy clips in here, but unless you've got the small snappy clips. So hook your uh, clip in like that and then your bow is ready to go. So I have a lot of different bows that I've made, a lot of different colors and styles. Like I said, satin is really the easiest to work with if you're trying this for the first time. So have fun with it. And if you come up with any new fun creations with these bows, I would love to hear about it. So let me know and I hope you enjoy this tutorial.